All right, welcome back. We are talking about inverse trig functions here. And in the last video, you saw uh, how we had to restrict the domain of our sine, cosine, and tan functions so that their inverses would pass the vertical line test and that would they, so that they would be functions. And what that resulted in is if we go to the diagram, the unit circle diagram, it resulted in us having to cross off, cross off quadrants that are not going to give us answers. So, for instance, for sine inverse, when we restricted the domain, we restricted the domain to be, uh, I'm sorry, we restricted the domain of the sine function to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So, I'm actually, I'm not going to write it, but I'm going to show it in the diagram. We restricted the domain to go from negative pi over 2, which is here, to pi over 2, which is here, which meant we don't consider those quadrants. Okay, so when I, you add, when I mentioned the restricted quadrants, this is what I mean. And for cosine, cosine, we went from 0 to pi, and we considered those quadrants as unnecessary. And tan inverse, it was also from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so notice that the restricted quadrants for cosine and sine are the same. I'm sorry, for sine inverse and tan inverse are the same. That's what I meant to say. All right, so now let's let's see if we can motivate some of these problems. Um, <clears throat> now here I've got two examples, and this is not these are not inverse trig functions. These are just normal trig functions. So we're evaluating the sine of pi over six, which you can all do. Um, but what I want to draw your attention to is that the input here is an angle, right? And our answer is going to be a ratio. So when you input, when you input uh, into the sine and cosine and tangent functions and the trig functions, you input an angle, and the output is a ratio. And so we know how to do this, right? You you find pi over 6, so pi over 6 would bring me here is 30 degrees. So that's 30, that would be 60. So that's 1, that's a root 3, and that's a 2. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 over 2, and of course it's a ratio. And similarly, for cosine, we input an angle, and we expect to get out, as an answer, a ratio. Now 5 pi over 3, let's see, that's 5 times 60 degrees, it's 300 degrees. So that brings me here. So if that's 300 degrees, that must be 60 there, right? So that's a 30. So that's a negative root 3, and that's a 1, and that's a 2. And so the cosine is 1 over 2. Okay, so you input into the sine, cosine, and other trig functions. You input the angle, you get out a ratio. Now we're going to do the inverse trig without a calculator. And what I want to draw your attention to is that is not an angle. It's a ratio, right? So we're inputting a ratio into the sine inverse function, and the answer we expect should be an angle. And it makes sense that that's the reverse, because that's what inverse, inverse functions do, right? I mean, when you graph them, I know you switch x and y. It, and the, the, the basic sense of inverse is that inputs become outputs, and outputs become inputs. So it makes sense that now we're inputting the ratio. We've got to find out what was the angle that we can take the sine of to get negative 1 half. That's what this means. So sine inverse of negative 1 half means what angle do I take the sine of to get negative one half. Now, there are infinite number of angles you can take the sine of and get negative one half. But there is only one if we restrict our quadrants. And the restricted quadrants for sine, remember, are the left two. So we only consider these two quadrants from negative pi over two to pi over two. And so this is how the thought process goes. This is a negative ratio. In which of these two quadrants is sine negative? It's negative in the bottom one. 
So you do need to be able to identify where sine is negative. Okay, so now I've got my triangle set up. I need to fill out the sides of the triangle so that the sine is negative 1 over 2. Well, that means that that's a negative 1 and that's a 2. And now at this point, since I know that that's a negative 1 and that's a 2, that determines this. That must be a root 3. And now I know what the angle is. Remember, my answer's, my answer's got to be this angle. This is, well, the reference angle is 30 degrees, but i got to be very careful about how I specify my answer. Right? We started here, and I, I'm, I'm not going to write my, I can't write my angle as like this one. That's 330 degrees. But, and it's true that the sine of 330 degrees is equal to negative 1 over 2. But that is not going to be the answer. The answer, because we can't rotate past the restricted quadrants. So the only way to get to this answer, answer is to rotate down. So I need to write this as, I need to write my answer as negative 30 degrees. So that is the answer. The sine inverse of negative 1 half is negative 30 degrees. Notice we only get one answer here. We only get one answer. And that's because we restrict the quadrants and we don't, we're not allowed to rotate through them. So let's try, let's try a couple more. Cosine inverse of negative 1 half. So again, I'm inputting the ratio and my answer has got to be an angle. Well, for cosine, the restricted quadrants are the bottom two. And we only consider angles from 0 to pi as being our answers. So, this is a negative ratio. In which of these two quadrants is cosine negative? The left one. And i got to fill out the sides of the triangle so that the cosine of the reference angle is negative 1 over 2. Forcing that to be a negative 1, I'm sorry, root 2. That'd be a negative 1 and that a root 2, which means this is determined, that's a 1. It means that this reference angle is 45 degrees. And so now my question is, what's, how do I write the answer? I can't write 45 degrees because that's just the reference angle. To get from here to here, well, there's no issue. I just rotate. So what is this in degrees or radians? Um, in degrees, it's 135 degrees. Now, by the way, notice it doesn't specify give your answer in radians or degrees, so you get to choose if that if it doesn't spe uh, specify. Uh, and by the way, if you want to put your answer in radians, it would be three pi over four. So either of these is a correct answer. Let's finish with this last one: tan inverse, tan inverse of root three. So that's a ratio, and we expect to get an angle out. Now again, I would write that ratio as 3 over 1 so that it, it looks like a ratio. Tangent, the inverse, the restricted quadrants are the left two, like as with uh, sine. And now that's a positive ratio, and which of these two quadrants is sine positive? It's positive in the first one. i got to fill out the sides of the triangle so that the tangent of the reference angle is root 3 over 1. And by definition of tangent, that means the root 3 has got to be there, the 1 there, and that means that's a 2. Which means that this reference angle is 60 degrees, and that's also an appropriate, the appropriate answer. If I rotate 60 degrees and take the tangent of that, I get root 3 over 1. So that answer is 60 degrees. Or you could write your answers pi over 3. Those are both acceptable. Okay, so notice with inverse trig functions, we cross off those quadrants because we only want one answer. Right? This is, we, this is a function as an input. It, the output needs to be one answer. So we have to restrict the possible quadrants so that we only get one answer out.